Welcome to the ShareWalls online tutorial videos. In this tutorial, we will explain the deflection, hold down displacement, and storage of tables from the design results based on an example. For this video, we will refer to the same model used in previous tutorials of this series with some details modification. The loads have already been generated and the project file available in the description is saved until this point. Now, onto the deflection analysis table. We first have the force direction, which is explained in video 5.3, shear results. The wall surface is either separated by its exterior and interior surface materials, or is grouped as both when material on both sides of the wall is the same. Notice that there is a feature to design both sides with the same material in the wall's input view. In the next column, we have the factored design shear force on wall segment, as well as the length of the wall and the associated heights. Now, depending on whether you choose to never or always linearize the flexion equation, information will vary. The information changes between using the nonlinear four-term equation and the three-term linear deflection equation. By selecting never, deflection based on the four deflection terms are displayed. Framing bending deflection, panel shear deflection, deflection from null slip, and deflection due to the hold down. The total deflection is then the summation of each component. If the three term was selected, the shear and null slip components of the four term equation are combined into one shear component, and the section containing the apparent shear wall shear stiffness, GA, is reported, which is used to calculate that shear component. For more information about the difference between those two deflection equations, please refer to video 4.1, three term versus four term deflection equation. The hold down deflection shown in the deflection table that we just looked at is unpacked here in the hold down displacement table. After the hold down identification column, the uplift force column indicates the accumulated hold down tension force from overturning dead and wind uplift. The following columns show all the components that go into the calculation of the hold down deflection, including the elongation of the hold down, fastener slippage in the hold down, wood shrinkage and wood crushing. Elongation includes the vertical displacement due to the manufacturer's value for hold down assembly including the anchor bolt length and an added displacement if a longer anchor bolt length was used compared to the manufacturer's tested value. Notice that there is no value in the slippage column for this hold down, as most hold downs are tested as assemblies rather than individual components, and therefore the slippage component is included in the elongation component in the listed deflection values from the manufacturer. The wood shrinkage component, shown next, is calculated based on the moisture content in fabrication and in service assigned in the design settings, as well as the length subject to shrinkage value entered in the structure block window, which is typically the depth of the floor joist and the top and bottom plates. This calculation assumes lumber floor joist, but if engineered floor joist is used, the amount of shrinkage is minimal. Next is the wood crushing at the compression ends of wall segment, plus the extra displacement due to miscuts, which by default is set to 1 mm in the hold down settings. Finally, you have the total vertical displacement, DA, which is the sum of all the displacements we just described. This total DA, the vertical displacement, is then multiplied by the aspect ratio of the segment in order to report the horizontal component due to the hold down displacement. This matches the hold down deflection component reported in the deflection results previously shown. It is worthwhile noting that the hold down deflection on high aspect ratio shear wall segments, where the height to width ratio of the segment is larger than 2 but less than the maximum permitted ratio of 3.5, will be significantly more than the deflections of low aspect ratio shear wall segments. Once we have all the deflections, Story drift can be calculated and compared to the maximum permitted drift. Here you can see the actual maximum story drift taken from the worst case shoreline on level 1 for each direction. 
If deflections on a line have been equalized, therefore assuming a deflection-based distribution, it is the common deflection of all walls on the line. If using a capacity-based distribution assumption, it is the largest deflection for any segment on the line. Refer to video 3, Capacity versus Deflection, for more information on the different deflection assumptions. You can also see these values if we look back at the deflection table. The allowable story drift comes from NBC 4.1.3.5 for wind and 4.1.8.13 for seismic. In this wind case, the shear wall story height is 2.4 meters and the allowable deflection is 1 divided by 500, therefore the allowable story drift is 4.8 millimeters, as you can see from this equation. The ratio reported in the last column shows whether the allowable story drift is acceptable, if less than 1.0, or not, if it is greater than 1.0.